Undercover Carson, secret agent. Operation Death Ray, an assignment in Rio. Once again, the mysterious Chaka had been on the job before us. He'd been to the ancient ruins far north of Rio to extract what information he could from Professor Jacob Bruin. Now Bruin was dead, murdered by the local natives under circumstances which were to go unanswered for many, many weeks. But we had what seemed to be the first concrete gain in our search for the grim weapon of war. A notebook crammed with scientific jottings. Meanwhile, Sally Bruin was greatly distressed at the death of her father. Grief-stricken, this delightful young woman roused a fellow's protective instinct more than ever. She was desperate to get away from the place. But that went for Angelo and myself, too. The trouble was that we were stranded. Herman Nagel had vanished the previous evening with our chartered seaplane. At six the next morning, Angelo and I tried to contact Sir Giles Davenport in Rio. The two-way radio was working. He came through on the dot. Yes, uh, yes, Carson, uh, I'm getting you clearly enough. Though the mine's somewhat fogged at this early hour. But you say you've had some success with your bird watching? So, Sir Giles, we contacted the particular specimen we were after, and we seem to have a very rare egg. Oh, tip top, old man. Uh, but when are you coming back? I'm afraid there's a complication in that regard, sir. At the moment, we've no transport. No transport? Man alive, what about that seaplane I chartered for you? Well, it landed us right enough. Shortly before a tropical storm broke. That's what prevented us contacting you last evening. You know, I had a notion someone was trying to get through. But there was nothing but heavy static. But uh, do go on. Well, sir, as the storm got underway, our pilot Nagel took off and promptly disappeared into the rain and cloud. Well, uh, how do you account for that? Well, I can't, sir, except that he wanted us stranded here. Wanted you stranded? Why, the, the bounder. I've been calling him much worse to myself, Sir Giles. But the point is, we're very anxious to get out of this place. Any further bird-watching could be dangerous. In uh, uh, what way? Local natives aren't too friendly. Then we must do something. Though my good friend Julius Grant assured me that this Nagel fellow was trustworthy. Rough diamond, perhaps, but straight. I was inclined to agree wholeheartedly with Commander Grant until this happened. Well, Carson, we must get you out. It looks like another plan. Yes, yes, I, I dare say that can be arranged. Now, old man, you were to go to one of three locations for your bird-watching. If you could tell me which one... Well, that's uh, the trouble, sir. I don't know which. I, I, I don't, don't follow. We don't know which of the three locations this is, or for that matter, whether it's any one of the three. You see, sir, Nagel seemed to know what sort of birds we were intent on watching. He suggested this spot. Carson, I, I don't like the sound of this. It could well be a clever ruse to have you lost. Yes, that's what I'm afraid of, sir. Look, uh, you stay put beside that radio. Right, sir. I'll get busy, uh, chat with Grant. That's if I can raise him at this hour of the day. But have no fear, my dear fellow. We'll get you out. Well, we certainly hope so, sir. Depend upon it. I'll get cracking this moment. Let's say, uh, in one hour, you've got that? you got that, sir. We open up in one hour. Good. Then I'll say, sign off. Uh, best of luck to yourself and Angelo. Oh, thanks, sir. <sighs> well, that's that, Angelo. Turn her off in the meantime. Mm. It would appear, sir, now, that the flyer of the plane has lured us into a trap, as His Excellency suggests. I can't entirely accept that. Mm. You see, old chap, he at least brought us to the bird we were after... Scientist number three, Professor Jacob Bruin. Ah, perhaps it would appeal to his twisted mind to desert us in such a predicament. Mm. Yes, he's a strange fellow, I must admit. Mm. There is much to him that we do not know, Senor Carson. True. Pity we couldn't get him to talk. Talk, Senor? <laughs> he will be doing a great deal of talk to his associates, gloating over the predicament in which he has left us. Well, old chap, if Nagel's deserted us, then we must just wait and hope that Sir Giles can arrange another plane and locate us. But, but this is the wildest of territory, Senor. Almost unexplored. Oh, it abounds with evil ruins and untamed tribes. How can he find us here? Well, the radio will help. Now, you stand by it. Watch it every moment. And let's know if there's the slightest murmur from it. Mm, immediately, Senor. And keep your eyes skinned for these local boys. The natives? Sir, so, give a yell if they show themselves. I will, Senor. But where will you be? Now, through this archway for the moment. 
I've been trying to persuade Sally Bruin to doze off and rest, but so far she hasn't. I'm afraid she's taken the death of her father very badly. However, I must see what I can do. This ancient temple was the setting for treachery, all right. Huge stones, roughly hewn, caked with the grime of centuries, somehow emanating evil. Jacob Bruin had cleaned up a number of the vaults and chambers for use as living quarters, while behind the massive altar of sacrifice down below, he'd conducted his lone investigations into the death ray, until the sinister Chaka had arrived, robbed him, and put a strange blight upon his health. In one of the chambers, Sally Bruin lay dejectedly on the bed, her chestnut hair uncombed, her huge eyes staring dazedly. My heart went out to her. You're very kind, Mr. Carson. I oh, wish I could do more, my dear, but... Oh, what are idle words at a time like this? Well, I'm over the worst of it now. There'll be no more tears. Oh, don't worry about them. Especially if it helps. No. You see, I've cried myself dry. Yes, it's been a terrible blow. I understand. You don't mind if I talk about Father? No, no, not at all. Matter of fact, I'm greatly interested to hear more about him. Well, I've only really known him for seven weeks. And in that time, he's been a sick man, daily growing worse. He still had his sight when I arrived here. Mm, so, I gathered that. So at least he did see me. I'm sure that gave him great joy. I was so concerned, Mr. Carson, all the way out from England, I kept thinking about it. He'd gone to so much trouble to trace his lost daughter, and I was afraid he might be horribly disappointed. Oh, my dear, no man could be disappointed. But uh, when did his eyes really fail? About two weeks after I got here. I see. Then he seemed to lose his appetite, then wait, and then the will to live. Now, steady, Sally. There won't be any tears, I promised. He was such a kind man. It, it's so tragic that I should have lived all these years and only known him at the end. Oh, well, that's life. He used to tell me that after Mother took me back to England and then through the war years on the continent and his isolation here... He often wondered where I was and what I was like. He was a very gentle person. Of course, my dear. Of course. Last night, he told you why he was here. What he was doing, I mean. Oh, yes. Uh, something about a death ray. His mind was wandering, no doubt. No, no. No? He'd been working on that very weapon during the war in Europe. You don't say. But he thought it was wrong. The war? Oh, no, no, the death ray. Oh, sounds a horrible sort of thing. He used to tell me what destruction it could cause. Wipe out whole cities, make steel bridges twist and melt. Great Lucifer. It used to terrify me. I don't wonder. But all the time he was experimenting with it, he was deeply worried. Father was a man who had some feelings for other people. It distressed him greatly that all his information should have fallen into the, ha into the hands of Chaka. Oh, yes, yes. He accused me of being an associate of someone called Chaka. You don't know Chaka? My dear, the only charcoal I've heard of is a tract of land in the northern Argentine. Well, who the places is he? He's a very evil person. Mm, so, but uh, as well as that. He was a scientist who worked once with Father. I used to ask about him, but Father kept saying that even to talk of the man might bring still more trouble. He believed that his blindness and sickness were caused by Chaka. Mm, makes you shudder. But um, what nationality was he? Well, I'm afraid I don't know. To tell you the truth, Mr. Carson, I was a little afraid to mention his name myself, just in case Father was right about it, causing still more trouble. Well, Sally, this situation is rather incredible. Here I am on a survey for a British meat-importing firm, and I run into death ray and murder. Please. Forgive me, my dear. And I also run into a very attractive young woman. And such a helpless one. When I came out here to Father... I... I thought I'd found someone at last. And now I feel so terribly alone. Now, don't worry, Sally. We'll see that you're not deserted. Senor! Hello? What's our shadow, Senor Carson! Here, old chap. Come right through. The radio, eh? Oh, no, no. Do you hear? Hear? What? Oh, the plane. The one that left, Senor. Nagel sea plane. See, see. And these massive stone walls absorbed all the sound. And best we get out and have a look-see. Uh, it circles above the ruins, Senor. Then heads to the stretch of water where it formerly came down. Well, it seems he's landing. Mr. Carson, what's all this about? It looks as if our truant pilot has decided to return. Come along. We'll get through to that landing site and out to the plane in the rubber dinghy. 
friend Herman Nagel's got some explaining to do. The ruins were surrounded by jungle, but then it thinned away to scrub for about half a mile to the stretch of water. We wasted no time in leaving that temple, and Angelo and I had three precious things with us. The captured notebook, the two-way radio, and Sally. She'd grabbed a few of her belongings, and we were helping her with them. Oh! Anything wrong, my dear? Oh, no, nothing much. Just one of those sharp little branches. It struck my face. Yeah, we've got to force our way through, you know. Yes, I understand. Senor, I no longer hear the voice of the plane. Our friend Nagel's taxi to a stop, no doubt. But is he able to moor the plane, Senor, alone? Oh, that's a point. Well, you will recall that he had need of your assistance in that regard. Sir, yeah, he's probably just floating, waiting for us to make an appearance. Hmm. It is strange, is it not, that he did not circle the ruins until we appeared? Yeah, I've been thinking of that. That's all right, ah! Sally! <gasps> Sally, why are you standing there trembling? Mr. Carson, the natives. The natives? Sir Carson, they rise from the shadows of the trees in our path. Great heavens, yes. The arrows are ready in their bows, their spears are poised. A trifle awkward. Oh, it's trapped, trapped. I'll take it easy. Senor, we must return at once to the protection of the ruins. There doesn't seem much else we can do. Oh, look, Mr. Carson! What now, Sally? Behind us. Huh? Yeah, more of the blighters. And on all sides, Senor. Oh, we'll never reach the plane. Uh, no panic. What hope is there, Mr. Carson? Uh, well, there's not much. We're unarmed. That is, barring a couple of my pipes. Oh, oh no, Senor. Your pipes can have little effect upon these savages. Oh, even now they close in upon us from all sides. Oh, they'll murder us. Just as they murdered my father. <laughs> Yes, at that stage, I didn't like our prospects of seeing the lights of Rio again. The little brutes advanced silently from all sides, their eyes fierce, all ready to let loose the rain of death. Our plane was back, but meanwhile we had another grim obstacle in Operation Death Ray. Operation Death Ray. 